Let's practice solving for area. A farmer wants to grow cabbage and wheat in his field. He divides the field into two sections. Give the area of the field. So when looking at this problem, you can look at it from a couple different ways. One is to look at it from the shape, which is the rectangle. To find the area of a rectangle, area of a rectangle or square is length times width. And in this case, we have the length and we have the width. Now, if we only wanted to find for cabbage, you should recognize that that's a triangle. Area for triangle is one half base times height, or essentially half of whatever your rectangle is. So in this case, we're not looking for one or the other. We're looking for both combined. So I'm simply going to take my length and multiply it by my width. 210 times 200. Simply put, it's really 210 times 2s, because I'm going to have two placeholders for my zeros. And now I'm simply looking at it as 210 times 2, which is 0, 2, and 4. So 42,000 yards squared is my total area of my garden. Now, if, or the field, if I wanted to find for cabbage, remember the triangle is half of it, so I would simply divide this in half. Or if I wanted to find for wheat, I would simply divide this in half. Either way, you can find for two triangles if you want. It's an extra step. Or you can simply use length times width. If x equals 7 units and h equals 4 units, then what is the area of the triangle? So, like I said before, when you're finding for the area of a triangle, a triangle is going to be half of the rectangle or half of a square. In this situation, they're asking us to find for the area of the triangle. And they're already giving us x, which is this portion, which is going to be our base, and h, which is this portion, which is going to be our height. It's really important when you're looking at this to recognize that this side length is not the height, okay? Sometimes they're going to give you an extra side length here to see if you know to use this as your height or this side length as your height. From the top, you think about it dropping a rock off the edge of a cliff, it's going to go straight down, right? It's not going to roll down that extra hillside. It'll go straight off. So you're going to drop the rock from here and it'll go straight down. It's also helpful sometimes for those of you that have a hard time visualizing this, um, is to turn this way, and then you'll see that this is your base, and this is your height. So I can look at this two different ways. One, I can say base times height divided by two. That is the same thing as saying half of your base times height, because remember, when you multiply anything by a half, that is a division of two. Multiplication of half is a division of two. So I prefer to look at it this way, but you need to recognize that you still are going to need to know that this is the same as this. So I'm going to take seven units, which is my base. I'm going to multiply that times H, which is four units. And then once I do that, I'm going to divide that by two. Seven times four is 28. And 28 divided by two. I know that off the top of my head. If you don't, you should say 28 divided by 2. 2 goes into 2 one time. 2 goes into 8 four times with nothing left over. So 14 units. Why units? Because that's what they're using. They're not saying yards or meters or feet. They're saying units. 14 units squared because we're looking at the area. So base times height divided by two or one half base times height is finding for any triangle. If X equals nine units, Y equals two units, and H equals 11 units, find the area of the trapezoid shown using decomposition.
So when you're looking at a trapezoid, there is an algorithm you can use to find the area of a trapezoid. But until we get to that part, I want to focus on how to decompose or deconstruct or break apart the trapezoid into multiple shapes that you'll be able to find easily. So I've already set this up to look like the picture. In this situation, the trapezoid without the lines would be here. So knowing this, I'm going to start first with recognizing that this shape is the shape of a triangle and this shape is the shape of a triangle. Not only that, my height is going to be symmetrical. It's going to be the same on this side as it is on this side. And my base is going to be the same. So knowing that, remember, area of a triangle is area equals base times height divided by two or one half base times height. And I'm going to do that twice because there's two of them. So my base for this triangle and this triangle, both of them are going to be two. So area equals two times the height, which is 11 divided by two. Two times 11 is 22 divided by two is half of 22, which is 11. But remember, I have two of them. So really, triangle number one is going to be 11 units squared. Triangle number two is going to also be 11 units squared. So that proves what we said last time, which is two triangles are going to make a rectangle or a square. Now, I have this accounted for and I have this accounted for. Now, all I have to find for is the shape, which is the shape of a rectangle. Remember, the shape of a rectangle is for area. Area equals length times width. So I have my length, which is seven. Sorry, not seven, but nine. So we have nine times width, which is 11, which equals 99 units squared. So now I have my two triangles, 11 and 11, and my rectangle, which is 99 units squared. So to find the entire trapezoid, I'm going to take this and this and this, and I'm going to combine them together, which is through addition. So I have 11, 11, and 99 added all together. 9 plus 2 is 11. Again, 9 plus 2 is 11, plus 1 is 12. So my total trapezoid, the entire area, the two triangles, the rectangle combined, is 121 units squared. As we go through this, you will eventually come to learn how to find the area of a trapezoid, not having to break it down into all of those pieces. But remember, if you can't remember that, you can always say, I know how to find for a triangle, and I know how to find for a rectangle. So that means I know how to find for two triangles, and I know how to find for a rectangle. So I know how to find for a trapezoid. Find the area of the parallelogram by using the area formulas for rectangles and triangles. So before I learn the algorithm for finding for a parallelogram, remember I can still break this apart into rectangles and triangles, and I'm going to do that. So I have one rectangle here. I'm also going to make a rectangle here. We're going to have a right angle. So this section, which is C, which will be six centimeters, will also be C up here. So I have this plus this, and then I have this little part that I'm going to figure out. So I know that from this point to this point, it's 14 centimeters. Now, if that's the case from here to here is 14 centimeters, and I know that this spot to this spot is a, worth a value of six, to figure out what this piece is right here from here to here, I'm simply gonna subtract this amount from this section from the entire, so I'm gonna subtract from the entire, just this little piece right here. So 14 minus six is eight centimeters. So that means the value of B now is going to be eight. And that also works for down here. 
because it's also six down here and all of it's 14. So 14 minus six again is eight. Or you can say eight plus what is 14 and it works out. C is still six. So if that's the case, this is my rectangle remember, or my triangle, sorry. Remember it area for a triangle is base times height divided by two or one half base times height. I'm going to keep writing that because you can decompose a lot of figures using basic algorithms of finding for area. So base times height divided by two. My base is six. My height is 12 divided by two. That's for this triangle. I'm also going to do the same thing here. Base times height divided by two. Notice that they're the same, okay? because these are the same size triangles. So 12 times six is 72. Now 72 divided by two, two goes into seven three times, one left over, two goes into 12 six times, nothing left over. So that means this area of this triangle is 36 centimeters squared. Well, guess what this triangle is going to be? I don't even have to do the math. It's the same thing. 36 centimeters squared. And that will match up because 36 plus 36 is 72. That means the two of those rectangles together would make a rec or two of those triangles together would make a rectangle. So I've got triangle number one, triangle number two. And now I have rectangle, which will be my third shape. Well, remember, area of a rectangle is length, that's eight, times height, which is 12. Eight times 12 is 96 centimeters squared. So now I have 72, remember, 36 and 36. I already know that's 72. 72 is the two triangles combined plus 96, I could also go 36 plus 36 plus 96, but that's another addition that I don't wanna make an error for. So now I'm simply gonna take the two triangles together, combine them to be 72, plus my one rectangle, that's 96, six plus two is eight, nine plus seven is 16. So my total area of my parallelogram is going to be 168, centimeters squared. If you know how to find for the area of a parallelogram using the other algorithm, that's fine. But you don't need to if you know how to decompose the shape. That'll be a couple extra steps, but it will help you on your way to understanding the area of parallelograms. What is the area of the object? So in this problem, I'm going to be able to break this apart into two different shapes. You could break it apart into many shapes, but I'm gonna choose as few as possible because it makes for less math errors if I do so. So if that's the case, if I wanted to, I could break this apart by simply having this shape and this shape, or I could break it apart by having this shape and this shape. I'm going to choose this one right here because I think I have to do the least amount of work. So this is shape number one and this is shape number two. I'm going to recognize here that it's a rectangle. So shape number one is going to be length times width, which is eight inches times six inches. Eight times six is 48. So it's 48 inches squared for shape number one. Shape number two is going to be, again, a rectangle, which is length is 20 inches times width, which is 10 inches. And 20 times 10 is 200 inches squared. So I know it's inches squared. I'm dealing with area. I'm simply going to add 8 plus 0 is 8. 4 plus 0 is 4. 2 plus 0 is 2. So my total shape is 248 inches squared. If I wanted to, I could also check it 
by going and finding for this shape. So if this is the case, well, this piece right here, I'm going to find for it first. And this one requires a little bit of work, but that's okay. So I know that my length here is going to be 12 inches. And my width is going to be 10 inches. And 12 inches times 10 inches is 120 inches squared. Didn't leave myself a lot of room there, but that's okay. Now my next shape is going to be a little bit different. I know, again, my length is 8 inches. But now I only have six. I know that from here to here is six inches. Well, if I look across, I know that this distance is 10. So if I mirror that and bring it all the way over, this is also 10. So that means that this entire width right here is six inches by 10 inches, which means it's six plus 10. And six plus 10 is a total of 16 inches. So I have eight inches now times 16 inches. Can't do that with my head. I'm going to multiply it over here. Six times eight is 48. Eight times one is eight plus four is 12. So this piece, piece number two, is 128 inches squared. Again, eight plus zero is eight. Four plus two plus two is four. One plus one is two. Look at I match 248 inches squared is still 248 inches squared. It doesn't matter how I break it apart, okay? When you decompose figures, as long as mathematically you're multiplying and adding correctly, sometimes subtracting if you have to take pieces away, you're going to still come up with the same result. Make sure that you choose the process that you feel you're most comfortable with. Also, look for things that are going to make less math work for you. The first set that I did, when I just decomposed it and I found for this one and then this one all together, it seemed to make sense to use that because I had the most information and I made the least amount of work for myself. In mathematics, you can make the least amount of work for yourself. You're probably going to enjoy it just a little bit more.